Nehemiah chapter 4. But, this is a bad but. They're building. It came to pass that when Sanballat, that's an enemy of the Israelites, the Hebrews, in Nehemiah and Ezra, heard that we builded the wall, he was wrong. What a way to get angry. The Jews are building their city and it angers them. And one needs to realize what the media doesn't tell you is when you've got the Middle East, anything that prospers the name of Israel and God Jehovah angers everybody around the nation of Israel. There is no peace of the wicked nations to Israel. Israel's hated by them. And any prosperity they get makes them angry. Though the news will not report it. They had their way. They would wipe Israel off the map eternally. And when you go into the public schools of the Middle East, Israel is not recognized on their maps in the Middle East. And took great indignation. They are not only angry, they are raw. And mocked the Jews. They're making fun of them. God says, I will curse them that curse you. Guess who's getting a curse? And he, Sam Ballot, spanked before his brethren, his brethren, his people, and the army of Samaria, and said, Now here's the mocking. What do these feeble Jews? Well, they can't be too feeble. They just traveled from Babylon. They just built the temple. They're building the walls and the gates. Now, chapter 4 is during chapter 3. Chapter 3, we read, they're built and it's done. Chapter 4 is, while they're building chapter 3, this is going on. They're moving large amounts of rubble. They are setting up beams and locks and the wall is being built and the garbage is being taken out. Without industrial tools that we have today, air power, of diesel power, and gasoline power, they're not feeble. You realize when you look at the life of Jesus and the disciples and the people of that time, they went up and down mountains like it was nothing. They're not feeble. So they're lying. Will they fortify themselves? No. That's not the commandment of the king. To go build the temple, serve the God and pray for the king and go build your city, the place of your residence. Not to fortify themselves. Will they sacrifice? Uh, yeah, the temple's built. They are sacrificing. You guys are a little late here. A little late. Remember when they're building a temple? Oh, king, they're building the city, and they're going to build up the city, and they're going to go against you. No, that wasn't the plans of Ezra. That wasn't the idea of the book of Ezra. The book of Ezra is we're going to build the temple. Now we're going to build the city. Are they going to sacrifice? You see how the devil gets it all mixed up. The devil will have men today believe works will save your soul as the law. I'm going to go so far to say, and I can't prove it, it may not be true. I'm going to believe that the devil is going to put in the tribulation period when the church is gone, you're saved by grace and nothing but by grace. When the salvation tribulation period is by mercy, it is also by salvation through works and faith. The devil gets it all screwed up, all messed up. Will they make an end in a day? Oh, they're not going to build it in a day. You guys talking hogwash. Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of the rubbles, rubbish, which they are burned? Yes, they will. <laughs> but there's a lot of rubbish. That rubbish is the first time and the only other time that word shows up in verse 10. 
Babylon did a very great job of destroying the city of Jerusalem. And by the description it is today, even by the enemy, is that place is just rubbish. The answer is yes, they will. Now, to Tobiah, the Ammonite of Lot, was by him, Sam Ballot, they uh, was by him, and they and he said, now he's going to taunt, even that which they build, if a fox, that's the first time fox shows up in the Bible, if a fox go up, a fox is a little animal, not that big. There are dogs bigger than foxes. There are lions more fierce than foxes. If a fox go up, he shall even break down their stone wall. You guys are going to build such a thing here that, you know, a little fox, he's going to tip it over. It ain't going to stand. It ain't going to last. And the only other time fox shows up, that's the first time, the only other time that word fox shows up, Luke 13, 32, and Jesus says, go tell that fox, talk about Herod. He said, I'm going to live today, but he prophesies. Here, now this is Nehemiah. Here, oh our God, here goes Nehemiah praying again. We are, for we are despised. Yes, true. And turn their reproach upon their own head. And Lord, weaken them. Make them fall. Make them get the bad case. Don't pray that as a Christian. Jesus says you're supposed to love your enemies. You're supposed to help them that persecute you. We are, see the difference in the Old Testament. The Old Testament, especially the book of Psalms. Lord, go get them. Go kill them. Yeah, go get them. That ain't New Testament doctrine. Go get them, Lord. Sick them. And give them for a prey. That means, you know, you're of an animal. You're, you've been attacked. In the land of captivity. You know, foxes, they're going to get it. Let the foxes devour them. And cover not their iniquity. That's definitely not today in the church age. Realize if we were to pray a prayer like that or seek God, we would be condemning someone to hell for all eternity. We don't have bless them that bless us and curse them that curse us. Nehemiah is saying by that statement, and you find the statement with David in the book of Psalms, is listen, God, you said if they bless us, they're gonna you're gonna bless them. If they're going to curse us, you're going to curse them. Lord, curse them. They're cursing us. That's scripture. But that is not scripture for the Christian in the church age. And even the time of Jesus walking on this planet, he says, love your enemies. He wants you to go a mile, go two miles. He asks for your coat, give you your coat too. He hits you in the cheek, say, here's the other cheek. So when we have the life of Jesus, we see a, a, a transition from the Old Testament way, a transition going to a whole new thought, a whole new life that does not match the Old Testament and the New Testament. Cover not their iniquity. And let not their sin be blotted. That's the first time that word shows up. Blotted out from before thee. God, don't clean them of their sin. Don't wash them of their sin. That's a pretty bold statement. But yet, from Abraham and his children, the enemies of God, the enemies of Israel, there is no blessing. Now, it's not there. Naaman was a, was a Gentile. He got right with God. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar got right with God. Cyrus is getting right with God. The Pharaoh in the time of Joseph, he got right with God. Now, the Pharaoh in the time of Moses, he didn't get right. Let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. It means you're damned. Go to hell. We preach that they may not go to hell. We preach that they may believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Confess your sin. For they have provoked thee, God, to anger before the builders. You're not working with my people. You are working against my people. And I am against you. 
Listen, when people harass you, when people taunt you, when people give you a hard time because you are a Christian doing what you're supposed to do, let God handle it. <coughs> God told Paul, hey, <coughs> excuse me, why persecute thou me? Now, Paul never persecuted Jesus. But Jesus took it personally. And when they go after us and they taunt us and they ridicule us and they, you know, whatever they do against us, they're not doing it to us, they're doing it to God. And our response, Jesus says, is, you know what, love them a little more. Pray for them a little more. Show them mercy and grace. And if they don't get right, they're not going to get it where they're going. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Now they're upsetting the builders. That's what Nehemiah is saying. The people of the land of Israel are, you know, maybe they're right, or maybe we can't do it. Or... So built we the wall. So again, chapter 4 is, is in chapter 3. And verse 4, chapter 1 says, Heard that we builded the wall. They are in the process of building the wall. And he says, so we built, so built we the wall. We're still doing. It. They're not stopping us. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. So it's coming to pieces, coming together. It's getting there. For the people had a mind to work. And the enemy's trying to stop them. And when you're going out as a Christian, you've got any public ministry, and you're doing something to, to reach the lost, somebody is going to come along, and they're going to stop you. And it most likely, most cases are going to be, they're going to do it in the name of a Christian. When you try to help someone grow in the Lord, there will be the enemy there. And what Ezra and Nehemiah, we're going through Ezra now through Nehemiah, what we need to see in our life is all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. As soon as you take that stand to say, I'm going to serve God to the best of my ability, and you're going to sow seed, that first one that comes out is the bird eating seed, and Jesus says that's the devil. The devil does not pay attention to a Christian in the bar room. He doesn't need to. The threat to Satan and his devils in hell is when a Christian gets up and he says, I'm going to pass out a gospel. I'm going to pass out at least one gospel track today. That's the threat of devil in hell. When you wake up and the devils in hell get up, you are a threat. When you get up and the devil else does, And there have been plenty of men in the history of the church that the devils quake. Because they got up. One of the devils in the book of Acts says, Jesus we know, Paul we know. But who are you? And Jesus told the devil, Satan, I know Job, you know Job. And our question is, Daniel was known by God. Gideon was known by God. Are we also known by the devils in hell? I don't know if they pray, whatever they do to Lucifer, to the devil. Hey, we need some more reinforcement here. That guy just got 12 tracks out today. And when you put tracks out and you go back, you know, depend, and you see them in the garbage can, that's Satan. Trying to stop. Oh, they throw them in the garbage. Oh, there's no sense. Yes, there is sense. Keep going. You know, when this person's falling away, keep going. Find someone else who will be more faithful. So we built the wall and all the walls joined together onto the half thereof. So the, for the people had a mind to work, get busy, go eat in all the world and preach the gospel. And we're steadfast, but it came to pass that when Sam bowed the enemy and Tobiah the enemy, and the Arabians, the enemy, and the Ammonites, the enemy, family, and the Arabians are family. The Arabians are of Ishmael, the Ammonites are of Lot. And you're going to better realize right now, when you're going to take a stand for Jesus, I know this personally, 
you're going to have family that's going to be alone with your enemy. And Jesus said, in order to be a disciple, you want to be a disciple, you want to work with God. You got to forsake yourself, you got to forsake your family, you got to forsake your friends. The enemies are showing up because they're doing something. The enemies will show up because you're doing something. And the Ashadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches, that means a hole, a void, the breaches began, began to stop. So they're not finished, but they're getting there. Them walls, the holes in the walls, are starting to get closer and closer and closer, getting built up. And stopped. Then they began to be very wrong at God's work. At God's work. We tried everything we can to stop you from preaching the gospel. You will not stop. You're going to keep on going. As much as you fight to get the gospel, I'm going to fight to stop you. That's the, devils in that's the devils in hell working, and it's God in heaven working with you. And minority wins. Majority loses. Broad is the gate that leads to destruction. Straight is the gate that leads to life. When Jesus went to the cross, he had very few of his disciples there. One. They were very raw, angry at God's word. And conspired. They're going to do anything they can. All of them together. Well, we just read the list. Together. We're getting together in unity. We're going to do a mega church against God. And mega churches are, most of them are a work against God because it has nothing to do with the Bible. They don't even have a Bible. And the people you will meet in a public, oh, I'm a Christian too, and I let my light shine. You're an enemy of the Bible and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Only a fool would say that. Gather, the, they conspired together to come up, I mean, to come and fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. They see that the, the walls are coming up, and the best right now offense is to prevent them from making a defense. We're going to attack and start fighting them. We're going to battle, though you're not ready. Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto God and set watch. That's a military term. We put watches out. We put sentries out against them day and night because of them. We kept people watching out in the water. All right, let us know if they're coming. Let us know they come in the area. We got to know. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of burdens is decay. That's the first time that word shows up, and it only shows up in Isaiah 44, 26. The people carrying things, the people being pickup trucks, being dump trucks themselves, who are carrying away the rubble and stuff that we don't need, it's getting really too much. And there is much rubbish trash so that we are not able to build the wall let's quit that's what they're saying it's too much for us to do let's quit there's not enough of us and but there's not enough of them there are more jews working on that wall than there are the enemy but satan makes it look like oh they're on the winning side we're on the losing side don't quit and our adversaries, which we just read about, said, They shall not know, neither see till it come in, the mist among them, and slay them, and cause the work to cease. I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to come after you guys. We're going to get you guys. We're going to come right around your, your corner, and we're going to get you in the back. When you turn around, we're going to be there. When you look to the right, we're going to be there. We will be inside those walls to kill you. It came to pass that when the Jews, which dwelt by them, <coughs> the enemy, came 
They said unto us ten times, From all these places whence he shall return unto us, they will be upon you. We're coming in. Therefore, as a reaction, set I in the lower places behind the wall, and on the higher places, I even sent the people after their families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. We got builders, and now we got warriors. We got construction, and we got an army. And I looked and rose up and said unto the nobles, people of authority, people of elderness, and to the rulers in charge, and to the rest of the people, be not ye afraid of them. They are. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, your sons, for your daughters, your wives, and your houses. You got to have Christians get up. And get, hey, we got to fight. Don't give up. Keep on going. It is worth it. Battle. Fight for the church. Fight for your family. Keep going. We need people like that. Keep the fight going. Don't wear down. Let me give you a band-aid for that. Listen, this is what you do when the enemy attacks. This is a good scripture for this time. A testimony. Look what the Lord has done for us. I need help. I need prayer. That's strengthening. And it came to pass. When our enemies heard that it was known unto us, we know what you're doing. We know your tactics. They made reveal. And God had brought their counsel to Noah, of going to destroy the Jews, that we return all of us to the wall, everyone unto his work. They left the wall. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Here they are. Look, they're coming to kill us. They're going. Guys, relax. Let's get in prayer. Let's build each other up. Let's talk about testimony time. Let's serve the Lord. And let's keep battling. God is able. And God will. And look, they're, they can't do nothing. Oh, yeah, that's right. God. Oh, I forgot about God. It's Tuesday. It's been a long time since Sunday morning. Uh, tomorrow's church. Let's go. And it came to pass that time for that the half of my servants wrought in the work, and the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows and the habergine, the weapon. And the rulers were behind the house of Judah. They're working, they're preparing, their defense, their offense, they're watching. They are not going to be left unguarded, for the Bible said, uh, your adversary is, is the devil, and like the lion that seeketh who he may devour. Let's watch for that lion. Let's keep our eyes open. You carry that, that sword, and I'm going to carry the bricks. Rulers, you too old to work. You use your eyes what you can see and let us know. Sound the alarm if we need it. Everybody needs to work and everybody can't build a wall. Some are able to fight. Some are not able to fight. You keep an eye out. I guarantee there's somebody here running around with water. A bucket of water to, to give water. Somebody's running around with this bread. Here, have some bread. Have some bread. Here's some bread. That's all you can do is bread. Yeah, you need bread. You need water. You need a water boy, water girl. Behind the house of Judah. They which builded on the wall, and they that bear burdens. So there are builders and there are men carrying garbage away. Hey, we're going to build that, that section of wall over there. It's all smashed. It's all broken. It's just a mess. Carry that rubble away so we can build there. Okay. They did it without dump trucks. They did it with whatever they had. Build it on the wall. They that were bare burdens. With those that laden carry things. Everyone with one of his hand wrought in the work. 
and with the other hand held he a weapon. Here's a guy with a shovel, and here's a guy with a spear. Here's a guy with a rake, and he's got a, a bow and arrow. Here's a guy, he's picking up a rock, and he's got a, a weapon on his, on his belt. The enemy's there, yes. Do not be deceived. The enemy's there. The enemy will attack, and you've got to be ready. And when you're working, serving the Lord, that is when the devil's going to come. When you're out there telling people about Jesus, that's when the devil will come and try to deceive. For the builders, everyone had his sword girded by his side. You got your sword? The Bible says in, in uh, uh, Ephesians, your sword is your word, the word of God. You got your sword prepared in the battle? Don't go out to a public ministry without your King James Bible. By his side. So, I've seen Christians have their Bibles in their cars and stays in their car to the next Sunday morning. It's not where it goes. And so build it. And he that sounded the trumpet was by me. What's the trumpet for? Here comes the enemy. Da -da 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 -da. Round up. This is not a test. Get your weapons. And I said unto the nobles, and to the rulers, and to the rest of the people, the work is great. We got a big job. And large, there's much to be done. And we are separated upon the wall. They're not shoulder to shoulder. And it doesn't say how far they're from each other, but they're, they're at a distance enough that they're not touching each other. There may be a guy up on the top of the wall and one down beneath. There may be one rolling stuff away. One far from another, and it don't say how far there are. So in unity, they're also separated. And when we have ministries, there'll be one group of people go knocking on doors. There'll be another group of people go preach on the street. There'll be another group of people just pass out gospel tracts. There'll be another group of people who just pray. We're in unity in the brethren amongst God seated in heavenly places, but you all can't be in the same place at the same time. In what place? Therefore ye hear the sound of the trumpet, resort ye thither unto us. Our God shall fight for us. Now look at it, he says resort. And when you think of the word resort today, it's to go on vacation to this place where they'll take care of you, they give you a bed, they give you a restaurant, and you can go skiing or you can go swimming in a pool, you can be at the ocean or be well, that's that's not the resort here. When that trumpet blows, it's time to go to war. One of our Christians are in the hospital. One of our Christians is having a family problem. One of our Christians is having trouble. We got to get on the armor of prayer. That's also in the armor of God. That's the knee pads. Prayer. Or we may have to help with finances. We may have to help with maybe meals. Satan has taken down one. Our own selves have taken us down. Maybe God has taken us down. But we got to stand for the fight of the prayer. So we labored. That's the first time that word shows up. Labored. In the work. And I know it's not the first time. Labored and work. That's what it is. Only in America do you have Labor Day and everybody gets a day off. It's ridiculous. And half of them held the spears from the rising of the morning, 6 a.m., until the stars appeared. They're working later than 6 p.m. They're working, okay, the stars are out. And it's dark. Likewise, at the same time, said I unto the people, let everyone with his servant, people doing the service of people, lodge within Jerusalem. 
when it's time to go to bed, when it's time to have our meal, we're going to do it in the city. You're not going anywhere else. And you ought to have one church where you go to labor, one church where you go to serve. Not church, church, that church, the church over there. One place. We're going to do it in Jerusalem. That in the night, when we're supposed to be sleeping, they may be a guard to us and labor on the day. When we sleep at night, we're going to have somebody watching over us. Because we can't watch, we're sleeping. So neither I nor my brethren, the Hebrews, the Jews, nor my servants, nor the men of the guard, watch you now, which followed me, none of us put off our clothes. They did not change clothes. Saving or except for everyone put them off for washing. They washed their clothes when they needed to be washed. Probably more so than other so, or maybe they could wear a couple more days, but we're going to stay with the same clothes unless we need to wash because we got to be ready. They slept in their clothes, what are you saying? When they went to bed, they went to bed dressed just in case the trumpet blows and we gotta go. we're not going to be caught naked. We're not going to be caught half-dressed. And when we put that armor of God on, we're to put it all on, buckle it up, and keep it on all the time. Don't put it in the closet. Because when the earthquakes come, it might not make it be able to open that door up. And Satan will do whatever he can to prevent you from getting that armor. But if that armor is on, if that armor is buckled up, and that armor is ready to be used and known how to be used, be ready. But that armor sometimes can get a little soiled. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So the enemy's there. Let me tell you, the enemy's there. Be prepared. Be ready. Be active. But don't quit.